Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spud Knocker, as always, and welcome back to the Persian Gulf. Today we're going to take a look at what we need to do in the F-18C Hornet to be able to get ready to head into enemy territory and strike our target. Now when heading into enemy territory, we want to call on the radio fence in or to let other flights around us know that we are in enemy controlled airspace and are ready to go fight. So some of these things are forgotten quite routinely by new players in DCS World or new pilots who are just getting started in the Hornet when they come and play with us on the subreddit Wingman Finder. Uh, we also have a Discord Wingman Finder. So I thought I should make a video and help any new guys out or any low time Hornet pilots out. So we'll go ahead and get started. So the number one biggest thing is always make sure your RWR is turned on. When your RWR is turned on, you'll be able to see threats that are around us, uh, SAMs, radar guided AAA, interceptors, things of that nature. So always make sure you hit your power button down here. Always make sure your dispensers are on. We'll just put them in bypass for now. I have an awesome dispenser, dispenser profile video as well as a selective jettison video you can check out here. And some of the other things we're going to talk about here is just a quick guide for them. Uh, WAGS has made some awesome videos uh, that go really in depth and show you why and how to do almost everything when it comes to these things we're going to talk about. So the next thing you need to do to, to make sure you are safely moving through the combat zone would be to set up your navigation systems. So we'll go ahead and box waypoint, push it up to waypoint 1, which is our initial point, 34 nautical miles away. And we'll go ahead and put it into auto so that it's aut automatically cycling for our waypoints. Now, most of these things we want to do before we get into enemy territory and before we get into our initial point. Also, you'll notice we're in barometric altitude hold with our auto throttles that we're on. We'll go ahead and put them back on with our auto throttles on. A lot of these things we want to make sure we can do with autopilot off and with our auto throttles off while you're maneuvering, trying to gain a tactical advantage against the enemy. So don't always rely on the autopilot and don't over rely on autopilot, especially in enemy territory because that makes you a sitting duck. So we'll go ahead and throw the auto throttles on just for the purposes of this video. In combat, I always like to make sure my radar is up. I usually run a two bar scan to get a quicker scan across and we can always adjust our antenna elevation up and down using the buttons on our throttle. Now, because we have limited screen space, we may not always be able to have an EW page pulled up. That's no problem. We have a built-in RWR scope just underneath our right DDI, just for that reason. Of course, we can look at a more detailed picture on our EW page, but uh, this works in a pinch. Now, before you get into combat, ideally before you get into enemy territory, but certainly before you, you pass your initial point, you want to make sure your weapon systems are set up for striking your target. So we'll go ahead and hit our Mark 83s. We've got four of them on board. We'll go to our mechanical fuse, and we'll select nose. Electronic fuses I don't think are implemented yet, so we'll just leave those off for now. Mechanical fuses work just fine. To, to adjust our quantity, our multiple, and our interval, we'll go ahead and set UFC, go over to our quantity. I like to usually drop two bombs at once, so we'll hit two and then enter, and now we've got a quantity of two here on our stores page. Multiple means how many weapons are going to be dropped in succession with each other. So if we've got a quantity two of two and a multiple of two, we will drop all four bombs with one, trick, with one press of the pickle button. So first, one, two bombs will fall, then the second two bombs will fall. We're not going to mess with that right now, since for this strike mission, we want to make sure we have two presses with a pickle button ready to go. So we'll bring the UFC back up, we'll go back to interval, and I like to usually be around 50 feet. I think that's a good distance to be able to straddle uh, down the axis of a convoy, a uh, soft target like a AAA uh, installation, a radar installation and sometimes even uh, an armored vehicle, or a lightly armored vehicle. So as you can see here on our stores page DDI, we've got quantity of two, multiple of one, 
So we're going to have only one drop of two with that pickle button press, as well as an interval of 50 feet. So we're ready to go with our weapons there. We want to always make sure our master arm is on. This happens to real pilots in real life. If you read Hornets over Kuwait about Marine Corps Hornets in the 1991 Gulf War, you'll see that many pilots in real life actually, actually flew into combat uh, without their master arms on, dove on targets, unable to release countermeasures if they needed to, and were uh, stuck pressing the pickle button for nothing to happen. So it happens to real life pilots too, but we definitely want to avoid that because it's extremely dangerous. So always make sure your master arm is on before you fence in. So we don't need to be on our stores page now that we've had have our profile set up. We can go ahead and head to our EW page. I recommend always having this up when uh, you can. As you can see, we can see two Hawk batteries out here in front of us. The closer in to the center where your aircraft is uh, superimposed here, uh, the less of a threat that is. The more critical of the threat, the farther out on the bands they will move, with this outer band being the most critical. The reason is, our most critical threats want to know exactly what azimuth they are, so if the farther outside they are, the easier it is to take that azimuth that's on here and put it into real life action. It's harder to get a true to life azimuth the closer it is into our little airplane in here. Next thing is we always want to make sure we have our bingo set up. A lot of new pilots never set up their bingo, so we just want to make sure we have that set up. I like to usually keep that around 5,000. That tends to be enough to get out of the target area and at least find a tanker. Um, I don't find that I actually use as much fuel in the Hornet as most people tend to think they do. Just make sure you're not in burner all the time, especially in a combat area where that's a really nice heat source for man pads or red, uh, infrared missiles from interceptors. So, once you've taken a look at all of this stuff, you've got your dispensers good, you've got your, your weapons profile set up, you've got your radar up here, you know that there's a backup EW scope down here, you've got your navigation system set up, you're ready to hit your initial point and start flying in towards the target. So, now that we've got our weapon profile set up and our Mark 83s selected, all we need to do is just go into air to ground mode to get our CCIP symbology to pop up. If we wanted to go back to nav, we can simply hit that again and bring up our nav HUD again and be able to navigate more easily. Once we get closer to our target, if we need to bring our CCIP symbology up again, just simply hit air to ground again and you're ready to go. Of course, the same is true when it comes to your air to air weapons, whether it be your gun, your sidewinders, or your sparrows. However, if you go into air-to-air -air mode and then back to air-to-ground mode, you will need to go back to your stores page and reselect your Mark 83s. So, I hope this will help you guys out when it comes to getting your Hornet ready to fly into combat. If you need to check out how to set up your countermeasures profiles, go ahead and take a look at my previous video, uh, as well as selectively jettisoning stores in case we run into an emergency situation, we get jumped by an interceptor, or we get hit by AAA, or we just have a general emergency. So, I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give me a like and a subscribe, and fly safe, as well as happy hunting. Thanks a lot, guys.